252 million years ago, ancient life on Earth suffered a serious blow from a deadly combination of heat and low oxygen. 95% of all marine species perished, and two-thirds of terrestrial species vanished. It was a cataclysm so severe that it looked like the end of all life on planet Earth. But as the saying goes, life finds a way, and the most well-known prehistoric creatures would rise on Earth, the dinosaurs. If you love dinosaurs, then get ready to see your favorites, how they evolved, and how they would rule the Earth for millions of years. The extinction event of the Permian-Triassic era 252 million years ago marked the beginning of the Mesozoic era of the Triassic, Jurassic and Cretaceous period, which lasted 186 million years. During the Triassic era, there was one vast supercontinent called Pangaea, which was mostly vast deserts with a hot and dry climate surrounded by a huge ocean called Panthalassa. Dinosaurs would begin to evolve during the mid to late Triassic period. When we talk about dinosaurs, we immediately imagine towering and thundering animals like Tyrannosaurus rex. But new research shows that the dinosaurs and their pterosaur relatives evolved from extremely small ancestors. Proof of this theory was discovered in Madagascar when a newly discovered reptile species was found. Named Congonophon kelly or tiny bug slayer, it lived some 237 million years ago and stood just 10 centimeters tall. It's one of the first small animals found from the root of the Ornithordera family tree and is an important discovery. The miniaturization event in which it lived served as a survival strategy for early Ornithorderans and wear on its teeth showed the tiny creature preyed on insects. This eliminated the need for them to compete with their relatives for meat. Furthermore, researchers of this tiny dinosaur relative showed that feathers and other fuzzy skin coverings found on the later true dinosaurs and pterosaurs likely originated to protect the tiny dino ancestors from the extreme climate of the mid to late Triassic period when the first dinosaurs evolved. The Triassic marked the rise of the reptiles, mainly the archosaurs or ruling lizards and therapsids or mammal-like reptiles. For reasons unknown, the archosaurs had an evolutionary edge, muscling out their mammal-like cousins and evolving by the mid to late Triassic into the first true dinosaurs, such as Eoraptor and Herrerasaurus. Dinosaurs were divided into two main branches, Sarisgian, which means lizard-hipped, and Ornithischian, or bird-hipped dinosaurs. Eoraptor was at the root of the Sarisgian family tree, it was only 91 centimeters long and weighed about 11 kilograms. It had long legs that allowed it to run fast and its front paws had sharp claws that helped it to grab prey. Herrerasaurus was more advanced in evolution than the Eoraptor because it had a joint in its lower jaw. It had a large skull and its jaws were armed with the sharp teeth of a carnivore. It averaged in length from 3 to 6 meters and had five fingers on each paw with blunt claws. Storicosaurus was another early true dinosaur that was about 2 meters long with a large skull as long as its femur and there were 13 to 14 sharp teeth in its upper and lower jaws. It has short front paws with five fingers. It had long hind legs that allowed it to run fast. Storicosaurus was a predator that weighed about 30 kilograms, and although this dinosaur was kind of small, it probably had no trouble dealing with larger prey. Eoraptor, Herrerasaurus, and Storicosaurus are prime examples of the rapid evolution of predatory dinosaurs 225 million years ago. But at the same time, the first plant-eating dinosaurs appeared in the fossil record. Pisanosaurus was a one-meter dinosaur that weighed two to nine kilograms and had closely spaced teeth, forming a continuous edge for grinding plant matter. By the late Triassic period, there were at least 15 different dinosaurs. During the Jurassic period, Earth's climate changed from hot and dry to a much more humid and subtropical climate. Forests of ferns, cycads, and conifers began to cover the planet and the air was warm, moist, with tropical breezes. 
During the beginning of this period, the breakup of the supercontinent Pangaea continued and accelerated. Laurasia, the northern half of the continent, broke up into North America and Eurasia. The southern half, called Gondwana, began to break up during the mid-Jurassic. The eastern parts, Antarctica, Madagascar, India and Australia, split off from the western half of Africa and South America. New oceans flooded the spaces in between. Huge mountains rose on the seafloor and pushed sea levels higher onto the continents. It was all this water that created the humid and subtropical climate. Deserts began to turn green. Palm tree-like cycads and conifer trees such as the araucaria and pine were abundant. The oceans became full of diverse and abundant life, and at the top of the ocean food chain were the marine reptiles. The plesiosaurs with their long necks and paddle finned flippers. Among them were giant marine crocodiles, sharks and rays. Ichthyosaurs, squid-like cephalopods, coil-shelled ammonites, sponges, snails and mollusks were abundant in the ancient oceans. Coral reefs grew and expanded quickly in the warm waters and microscopic plankton increased rapidly to the point that they may have turned parts of the ocean red. The earliest known bird, Archaeopteryx, took to the skies in the late Jurassic, likely evolved from an early Celiosaurian dinosaur. Archaeopteryx had to compete for airspace with pterosaurs, flying reptiles that had been buzzing the sky since the late Triassic. Meanwhile, insects such as leafhoppers and beetles were abundant, as many of Earth's earliest mammals scurried around the feet of dinosaurs. It was at this time that the dinosaurs began making their mark in a huge way. Literally. Small quadrupedal plant-eating dinosaurs gradually evolved into multi-ton giants. The plant-eating sauropod named Brachiosaurus was 16 meters tall and stretched out to around 26 meters long and could weigh as much as 25 tons. Another herbivorous sauropod giant named Diplodocus was 27 meters long and weighed between 30 to 50 tons. The sheer size of these dinosaur giants may have stopped the attacks of a bulky meat-eating dinosaur that walked on two powerful legs who also lived during this time, the ominous Allosaurus. This huge carnivore ranged in size from 7 to 12 meters long, weighed nearly 2 tons and had 16 sharp teeth in its upper and lower jaw. And like many predatory dinosaurs of the Mesozoic era, Allosaurus constantly grew, shed and replaced its 3 to 4 inch teeth. And this dinosaur was fast. Models suggest that Allosaurus could run up to 34 kilometers per hour. Fossil evidence shows that Allosaurus preyed on Stegosaurus and the plant-eating dinosaur fought back punching holes right through Allosaurus's bones with its spiky clubbed tail. It could be why Stegosaurus had a pretty long run and survived all the way up to the late Cretaceous. But there were new predators that would come along that were as equally terrifying as the Allosaurus. The North American Tyrannosaurus Rex could grow 12.5 meters long and weighed up to 8 to 10 tons although now some say it might have weighed half of these estimates. But the T-Rex wasn't alone in the meat-eating dinosaur category. In fact, it was either outclassed or equal to two other sharp-toothed monsters. The South American Gigantosaurus, which had the same type of build and weighed 9 tons, and the 10-ton Northern African Spinosaurus. Still, the T-Rex was a mean and nasty predator, if not downright unhygienic. Experts believe that shards of rotten bacteria-laden meat was constantly lodged in its closely packed teeth, which gave the animal a septic bite that would eventually be fatal to its wounded prey. Of course, this process would have taken at least several days or weeks, and another T-Rex would probably reap the rewards. Scientists examining the T-Rex skull determined it had the bite force of between 1,500 to 5,000 pounds per square inch and could take bites of flesh in the 225 kilogram range. But Tyrannosaurus rex, like Allosaurus, had problems with prey itself. It lived in the same region and time period as some armored plant-eating dinosaurs. One of the most iconic dinosaurs next to T-Rex has to be Triceratops, which means three-horned face. 
All Triceratops had three horned skulls, two massive horns were above the eye socket, and one smaller horn was over the nose. Weighing around 6.5 to 13 tons, the biggest Triceratops was 9 meters long from nose to tail. The tips of their shoulders were 3 meters off the ground. Triceratops had teeth arranged in dental batteries, and each individual tooth was stacked in a vertical column of 3 to 5 teeth. These formed rows with 36 to 40 tooth-loaded columns. This means that a single Triceratops could have 800 teeth at its disposal. It had a narrow beak and powerful jaws that allowed it to grind down tough vegetation and trees. It's one of the last non-avian dinosaurs to evolve at the end of the Cretaceous. Ankylosaurus is another of the most famous armored dinosaurs. It was the largest Ankylosaurid and the last of its kind. It's thought to have lived right up to the end of the Cretaceous period. The body of Ankylosaurs was covered in bony plates. It had a beak and teeth and four horns that projected backwards from its head. Its tail ended in a club, which provided protection from predators. This would have been useful since Ankylosaurs lived alongside Tyrannosaurus rex and other meat-eating predators. At some point during the middle of the Cretaceous period, dinosaurs from the ornithopod family evolved into the popular hadrosaur, or duck-billed dinosaurs. They were large, oddly shaped, low-slung vegetation eaters with tough beaks on their snouts, which were used for shredding vegetation. These dinosaurs are believed to have lived in herds and were capable of walking on two legs. Sauropods became even bigger by the late Cretaceous period. You may have thought that Brachiosaurus and Diplodocus were big, but by the time the late Cretaceous period rolled around, there was another dinosaur that existed, which could possibly be the biggest land animal that's ever walked the Earth. Argentinosaurus. This behemoth could be 30 to 40 meters in length and weighed between 50 and 100 tons. It was a member of the Titanosauria, the dominant group during the Cretaceous period, and was a herbivore like its earlier sauropod cousins. There was also a strange new breed of dinosaur that lived 20 million years before they all went extinct. They were called Pachycephalosaurus, or bone-headed dinosaurs, and have a bizarre-looking skull with horns on the snout and around the base of the skull. These could have been used to fight off the last of the big predators, or even to show dominance over their own species. Of course, there are more than 700 different dinosaurs that have been found so far, but not enough time to cover them all in one video. There are some dinosaurs that lived in the colder regions, when they were further south and within the Antarctic Circle during the Cretaceous. During this time, there could have been some snow and ice, and temperatures as low as minus 10 degrees Celsius during the three-month-long dark winters. There were a variety of different dinosaurs living in this polar zone. In 2014, a skull section and upper and lower jaw bones were found of a miniature T-Rex called Nanaxorus hoglandi. It's believed that many dinosaurs had feathers to protect them from the elements, and this tiny T-Rex cousin was about 6 meters long. It's now believed that all species of Tyrannosaurus rex had feathers to protect them from the elements, and Nanaxorus was no different. Other dinosaurs like the horned and duck-billed dinosaurs, along with other small feathery predators, parrot-like oviraptors, and a small herbivore named Lielanosaura, lived in the polar region as well but their time would soon come to an end. Everyone talks about how dramatically the dinosaurs went extinct, but judging by the whopping 165 million years they survived, they might just be the most successful vertebrate animals to ever exist on planet Earth. In fact, some dinosaur relatives are still around on the planet today. Modern-day birds are, in fact, descendants of feathered dinosaurs and you might be surprised to learn that crocodiles are the closest living relatives to birds as they shared a common ancestor. The two groups are the only known survivors of the archosaurs. We all know what happened to the dinosaurs, and if you missed our video on the day the dinosaurs went extinct, we'll put a link in the description for you. Please let us know in the comments what you thought about the video, and tell us what you'd like to see next. Stay tuned for more cool videos, and thanks for watching.